Welcome to the deep dive. So it's 2025, and honestly, keeping our digital lives secure feels more crucial than ever, right? There's just so much data. Absolutely, and there's a ton of information out there about data protection. Sometimes it feels like uh, too much, hard to know where to start. Exactly. That's why today we're doing a focused deep dive. You've been looking at insights from uh, the Toby Teaches YouTube channel. Ah, Toby Teaches. Yeah, good stuff there. Right. And we're going to unpack three specific data encryption tools they cover. Mm. Harclone, Cryptomator, and Veracrypt. The big three, in some ways, or at least three very popular distinct approaches. Our goal here is really simple. Mm. Help you figure out which of these tools might actually be the best fit for your needs, your workflow. Because it's definitely not a one-size-fits-all situation. Definitely not. Okay, let's unpack this and uh, dive into the world of data security. Let's do it. So kicking things off with Harclone. Now, this one often comes up as a really powerful um, command line tool. Mm, yeah, CLI-based. Right. And its main job seems to be syncing and encrypting files directly to loads of cloud storage providers. Google Drive, Dropbox, AWS S3, the list goes on. Yeah, a huge list. That's one of its biggest strengths, its versatility. It sounds incredibly flexible for anything cloud-related. But, like, technically speaking, what makes it so powerful under the hood? Well, Arclon is basically designed as this kind of universal translator for cloud storage. It talks to so many different services, and critically, it encrypts individual files. It uses AES-256, which is, you know, the gold standard. Okay, AES-256, standard stuff. Strong. Very strong. Yeah. And encrypting file by file like that makes it efficient for syncing. It's really ideal for automated backups, especially if you've got massive amounts of data. Ah, okay. So automating big backups. Exactly. Think terabytes moving daily. You can script our clone to do that without you touching it. A graphical tool would probably just choke on that scale. Right. That makes sense for heavy-duty automated stuff. But you mentioned command line. That immediately makes you think, okay, maybe not for everyone. That's the trade-off. Absolutely. It's incredibly powerful and efficient because it's command line. Automation loves it. But yeah, if you're used to clicking buttons, there's definitely a learning curve. No nice graphical interface holding your hand. So usability is a factor. And what about metadata? I think Toby mentioned something about that. Good point. Rockclone is great at encrypting the actual contents of your files. Super secure there. But because it's syncing to the cloud, the cloud provider might still see some metadata. Things like uh, file names, maybe folder structures, timestamps. Ah, okay. So the what is hidden, but maybe not the where or when. Kind of, yeah. For most people, maybe not a huge deal. But if your threat model is super high and even knowing a file exists is sensitive, then that's something you absolutely need to consider. Got it. So our clone dot power automation, cloud flexibility, but CLI and metadata awareness needed. That's a good summary. Okay, let's switch gears then. Cryptomator. This sounds like almost the opposite in terms of usability. In many ways, yes. It's designed with user friendliness front and center. And it's free, open source. It, its whole thing is encrypting files before they even hit the cloud, right? Exactly. That's the key difference in approach compared to our clones direct sync and encrypt. Cryptomator works locally first. So how does it make that so easy? What's the mechanism? It uses this really clever idea of a virtual drive. Mm -hmm. Basically, you install Cryptomator, create an encrypted vault, and it mounts on your computer like a regular USB drive. Oh, like another drive letter. Precisely. Yeah. You just drag and drop your sensitive files into that virtual drive. Cryptomator instantly encrypts them, again, using AES-256. Then your normal cloud sync tool like Dropbox or Google Drive's desktop app just syncs the encrypted files from that vault folder. It doesn't even know it's syncing encrypted data. Oh, that's neat. So the encryption is totally separate from the sync process itself. Right. And it's super easy. Plus, it works across Windows, Mac, Linux, and they have mobile apps too. Very versatile for personal use. And being open source adds a layer of trust, I suppose. <laughs> it does for many people, yeah. The code is out there for anyone to inspect. So that drag and drop simplicity sounds perfect for just keeping sensitive files synced across your own devices securely. Huge win there. Definitely a sweet spot. But what about working with others? We collaborate so much now. Can you do live collaboration inside a Cryptomator vault? Ah, uh, that's its main limitation, really. It's fantastic for individuals syncing their own stuff. But no, it's not built for real-time, simultaneous collaboration on the same encrypted file. If you and a colleague both need to edit a document inside the vault at the same time, Cryptomator isn't the tool for that specific job. Okay, good to know. So individual ease of use, cross-platform, pre-cloud encryption, but not for live teamwork. You got it. All right, tool number three. Veracrypt. 
Another free open source one, but this sounds like it plays in a totally different sandbox. Disk encryption. Yeah, Veracrypt's focus is fundamentally different. It's all about encrypting storage at rest, not so much about the cloud sync aspect. So how does that work? It makes encrypted containers or encrypts whole drives? Both, actually. You can create an encrypted file container. Think of it like a secure safe deposit box file on your hard drive that you mount as a virtual disk when you need access. Or you can go further and encrypt an entire partition, a whole USB stick, or even your main system drive. Also uses AES-256, often in combination with other ciphers for extra strength. And it's known for being pretty robust. Oh, yeah. Veracrypt is widely considered rock solid for local data security. It has features like plausible deniability, hidden volumes, things that make it really tough to crack, even with forensic tools. Okay, so if I have a laptop or a USB drive, I absolutely need to lock down. Veracrypt is the heavy hitter. That's its forte, absolutely. Securing local or portable storage, making it essentially unreadable without the password. Makes sense. But if it's so good locally, why isn't it recommended for cloud use? Toby called it clunky for cloud. Is that fair? It is fair, yeah. And it comes down to how it works fundamentally. Veracrypt encrypts at the block level, like the whole container or drive structure. Okay, and why is that bad for the cloud? Because cloud sync services are usually smart about only uploading the changes you make to a file. Incremental sync, right. Right. Saves bandwidth and time. Exactly. Yeah. But with a Veracrypt container, if you change just one tiny file inside that huge container, the way the encryption works often means the entire container file looks different to the sync service. Oh. So the sync service thinks the whole thing changed. Pretty much. Hmm. So it tries to re-upload the entire massive container file every single time you make a small edit inside it. Yikes. Yeah, that sounds incredibly slow and inefficient. Clunky is putting it mildly. Totally impractical for regular cloud syncing. You'd just be constantly uploading huge blobs of data. It's just not designed for that workflow at all. Okay, that really clarifies the distinction. Veracrypt for local ironclad security, not cloud sync. Precisely. Right then. We've looked at our clone, Cryptomator, Veracrypt individually. Now let's try and bring it all together. This is where it gets really interesting, lining them up side by side. Yeah, comparing them directly highlights where each one really shines. So could you maybe summarize those key distinctions again, like the elevator pitch for each? Sure. So uh, our clone, your go-to for automated cloud sync, especially handling lots of data, if you're okay with the command line and understand the metadata aspect. Okay. Automation and scale in the cloud. Then Cryptomator. Yeah. Super user-friendly encryption before the cloud. Great for individuals syncing sensitive files across their own computers and phones. Easy drag and drop, just no live collaboration. Simple, secure, personal cloud sync. And finally, Veracrypt. The fortress for your local files. Encrypting entire drives or creating secure local containers. Rock solid offline security, but really not suited for cloud syncing workflows. Local lockdown champion. That's a good way to put it. So what does this all mean for you, the listener? I mean, it really sounds like the best tool is completely dependent on what you're actually doing with your data. 100%. There's no single best. It's about matching the tool to your specific needs, your workflow, and maybe even your technical comfort level. Right. So you need to ask yourself, am I mostly doing big automated backups to the cloud? Maybe our clone is the answer? Uh-huh. Or am I just trying to easily secure specific sensitive documents I access on my laptop and phone before they sync via Dropbox? Cryptomator sounds like the winner there. Makes sense. And if my main worry is someone stealing my laptop or USB drive and accessing the raw files stored locally, then Veracrypt is probably the way to go. Exactly. You have to diagnose your primary need first. Are you protecting data in transit to the cloud, data at rest on a cloud server, or data at rest on your local machine? They require different approaches. That's a great way to frame it. So we've taken this deep dive into our clone, Cryptomator, and Veracrypt. We looked at how they work, where they excel, where they uh, fall short. Hopefully that gives everyone a clearer picture for securing their own digital stuff. Yeah, ultimately, understanding these differences gives you power. It's about making an informed choice. Rather than just picking the first tool you hear about, you can actually choose the one that fits how you work and what level of security you really need. It connects to the bigger picture of being empowered, really. Absolutely. Oh. Informed choices are always better. So here's something to think about as we wrap up. Considering what you've heard today about these pretty distinct tools, the cloud automator, the user-friendly sync protector, the local fortress, how might you reevaluate your own approach to data security? Not just about, you know, which app to download, but maybe thinking more fundamentally about 
where your important data actually lives and what kind of protection it truly needs in that specific place.